Look, I love Rampardos as much as the next guy, but it does have its flaws. It's slow, frail, and the only thing going for it is its enormous attack stat, right? Wrong. With the sheer force ability boosting any move with a secondary effect, except recoil and stat drops on the user, pair that with the life orb, which doesn't give recoil if the move is boosted by sheer force, and then slap a trick room team around it, even its special hits hit hard. We even have some secret source blizzard tech since our main partner is Chili Reception Trick Room Slow King in order to Oko, Landorus, Great Tusk, and Gliscor, which never see it coming. Today's first battle is against Dr. Banana Man from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, and let me tell you, this is a good one. Rampardos really gets to shine, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. So without further ado, I present to you the Rampardos video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Dr. Banana Man. So they're going to lead off with Indeedee. To get our psychic terrain up straight away as we lead off with our landers. So, as much as I would stay in and go for a stealth rocks here, I don't want to get hit in the face of an expanding force. If it was something else, then maybe, but I don't want to get hit in the face of an expanding force, that's for sure. Um, so, I'm going to switch out into Mandibus. Mandibus can definitely take an expanding force because it's dark type. So, let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll just simply U turn on the Indeedee and, and see what it's going to do. So, Pebbles comes in. Like so, they go for a trick. So, what trick are they going to give us? What item are they going to give us? Uh, they switched us a choice scarf as they get my heavy duty boots, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, now we go for a U-turn. We 100% go for a U-turn here. We could defog away the psychic terrain, but it might work in our favor, blocking that extreme speed from the Dragonite potentially. So um, they're going to Bastiodon, an interesting choice. So I U-turn here 100% of the time. And I really, really, really want to go into Rampardos and Earthquake this thing, but they might Terra. So instead, I'm going to go into Landorus and get the Stealth Frogs up. I think Landorus is, is friends this thing out with an Earthquake. They don't look like they have a Hazard Clearer unless two Cannon gets Defog, which I don't think it does. Um, so let's go for a Stealth Frog straight up. They go for a Wide Guard, expecting an Earthquake. But I'm afraid that is not the case as we go for a Stealth Rock right now. Which is great. Now to stop them from going for their own Stealth Rocks and the Wide Guard again. Let's go for a Taunt. Taunt comes through. Stops the bastard on going from anything else like that. Um, as they actually go for a metal burst, which is interesting. So they are they've got the sturdy. They haven't got the sturdy because they don't have they are leftovers. <sighs> now we go for an earthquake 100 percent of the time. There is a chance they live the earthquake if they stayed in there, but they do withdraw. And they're gonna go into the two cannon probably. Yep, two cannon comes in. Nice and powerful, nice and stealth rocks. There we go. Earthquake comes through and does nothing. As you would expect. And the weirdness disappears from the field. So what do we expect from this thing? Uh, maybe a beak, beak Blast. Maybe a Beak Blast. So I'm going to go Heatran. I'm just going to go hard Heatran. Because the, the thing is, this thing could be Sheer Force as special. That like Hurricane Heat Wave and stuff like that, all benefiting from Sheer Force. Or they could be physical with Beak Blast. Or Bullet Seed, for example, with, skill, with loaded dice. And they're probably skill linked, to be fair. Probably skill link um, with like, I don't know what other, other ability you could have, but uh, sheer force could be it. Skill link, but it's definitely skill link by the looks of it. We go for a lava loom here. They actually do switch out and probably go into camera up to be fair. Camera up comes in. I could have gone for an earth power there, but it was risky. Risky play. Um, they get some stealth rock chip, which is always nice. We go for a lava plume, which is obviously going to do oh a decent amount of damage to be fair. That was a crit, that's why. Unfortunate crit is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, Camera is an interesting one. It could be physical or special, really. Um, so, I have to be careful with what I bring in here. I am going to go with my Universal Ground Resistor. I want to go Hydrapple. I think I'll go Hydrapple because if, if it uses a Fire-type move, it'll be special. Because um, it doesn't really get any physical Fire-type moves, except for maybe Heat Crash. But we should be able to live any hit from it anyway. And um, they go for an eruption. That's not going to do much damage with the health lower lack like is. As there we go. As now, we have no reason not to go for a fickle beam. So they go for a yawn. Interesting. So that's going to put a timer on my, uh, my hydrapple, which is interesting. So we go for a fickle beam. Nearly takes them out. So now we kind of have to switch out. I'm going to go Landorus. I'm going to go Landorus purely and simply because I want to. And also, because U-turn will KO. So we can scare them out with a U-turn. Get the Intimidate off real quick like so. 
They go for an Earth Power, that's going to do no damage. They probably expected something else to come in there, but no, Camerupt, I'm afraid. Your time is nigh as we go for a U-turn, and that takes out the Camerupt, which is fantastic. So, with Camerupt out of the way, we don't have to worry too much about our Sloking, right? So, with Camerupt out of the way, we don't have to worry too much about Sloking. So, I'm looking at that team, and I'm thinking, you know what? Rampardos does really well here. Like, really well. So, like, we could go into Rampardos, no problem. But the problem is they have Y Guard on Bastion on, which blocks Rock Slide and Earthquake. So we have to be really careful with what we do. Um, I'm actually leaning towards a Mandibus switch here. So I'm going to go into Mandibus first and foremost. Pebbles comes in. They go into Dragonite. So Dragonite's a good one. It could set up on us. I don't want it to set up on us. So I'm just going to smack it in the face of a foul play. They go for an Outrage, which is going to bounce right off us. That's banded. That's a banded foul play right there. As foul play nearly takes it out, which is great. So that's great. Um, if we assume that's banded, we should go into our Landorus, get the Intimidate off straight away. And the Rocky Helmet. The Rocky Helmet will take it out. So we'll get the Intimidate off, take the Outrage a bit better, and get the Rocky Helmet chip, which would be amazing. So obviously the Intimidate doesn't work because it's in a focus and not a multi-scale. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> And that's going to nearly take us out. But with Rocky Helmet Chip, it just gets rid of the uh, Dragonite like that. So the Dragonite is down. We just need Rampardos in now. Looking at their team, we just need to get Rampardos in somehow. Indeedy. Indeedy's an interesting one. So it's uh, got Heavy G Boots. It's not going to get hit by Stealth Rocks. It gets the Psychic Terrain up, which is always well and good. We could still use Landorus. We could still use that. Uh, I say we go Heatran here. I say we go Heatran here. There we go. Hot Rod comes in. Like so. Dazzling Gleam comes through. Expecting the Mandibuzz probably. But the Heatran, Heatran does the job just as well as Mandibuzz. It's special defensive. It takes any hit from a, all three of the moves it could have. Hyper Voice, Expanding Force, and Dazzling Gleam. Um, so there's no reason not to. So let's go for a... Looking at the team, I would say we could just go straight for a Lava Plume. There's no reason not to. They actually trick us. They're going to get rid of our leftovers and give us the Heavy Duty Boots. Which is fine. I can live with that. So we get heavy duty boost. They get some leftovers. We go for a lava plume. And that's going to do like no damage. But we do get the burn, which is nice. Burn is very nice. So if we assume they're probably going to switch out here. I had to guess. I'd say they switch out. I'm going to hard switch out into my um, mandibles. I'm expecting an expanding force here. Or another trick. Expanding force, yeah, there we go. So they're going, well, they're going for maximum damage output against the Heatran. They've given up on their NDD. Which is fine, but because we're choice scarfed, we can go for a foul play now, which should take them out. Foul play should take them out from here. And if it doesn't, so be it. Let's go for a foul play. They go for a Dazzling Gleam, they do outspeed us, and that does take us out. So even with the choice scarf, Mandibuzz was still outspeeded by the NDD, which is a which is a crying shame, really. Crying shame, but um, that's what you get for being negative speed as we are on the mandibles. So that's unfortunate. Um, but what can we do? So let's go into. I want to go into. I think. I think it's time for Rampardos. I really think it's time for Rampardos. So let's go Sloking. The moment we've all been waiting for. The Rampardos part. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Let's go for a Trick Room first and foremost. So they Terrastalize. So at least we know they can't Terror with anything else. Are they going to go Terra Psychic for the maximum output on the Expanding Force? They are. Let's see how much the Expanding Force does. I'm pretty sure the Psychic Terrain wears off this turn anyway. So there you go, Expanding Force. We're specially defensive. We should take it like a champ. For a start. Yeah, we do take it like a champ. We go for a Trick Room. Like so. There we go. Twisted the Dimensions. They're going to go ahead and get some leftovers recovery. Which is also fine. I'm pretty confident that they run out of Psychic Terrain this turn. Yeah, the weirdness disappears from the field. There we go. So now we can live in Expanding Force and we can go for a Chili Reception and get on out of there. They withdraw. Okay, so they're going to hard switch. What are they going to go into? Two Cannon? Two Cannon is fine. Two Cannon is absolutely fine. We tell a chillingly bad joke, of course. Chili Reception comes through. And now, 
we bring in the Rampados because there's no way they have Beat Blast. Right? The Trick Room is up. Rampados outspeeds everything on the team anyway. So we 100% go Dread here. We 100% go Dread here. And we go for a Rock Slide and we take out this two cannon. There we go. Rock Slide comes through. Two cannon cleanly goes down, which is amazing. So with two cannon down and out of the, out of the way, they've got a Rangaroo and they've got a DD. And they've got Bastion. They go Bastion. Bastion's fine. Um, so first and foremost, we have to try and do something here. So I think personally they go for a body press because they know the outspeed is in the trick room. So I'm going to Terra Flying and I'm going to Earthquake. I'm going to Terra Flying, I'm going to Earthquake, hoping they go for a body press here. Hoping they go for a body press here. That's what I'm hoping for, a body press. So we go Terra Flying. And if they don't go body press and they go stone edge or something. They go iron defense. I don't think it's going to be enough. With Rampardus' high attack, iron defense might not save you. As it does save them. It does save them. Okay, okay. Okay. Now they 100% go for... Let's go for an earthquake. Let's go for an earthquake. They go for a wide guard. That's fine. They go for the wide guard, that's fine. I don't think we need trick room. I don't think we need trick room anymore. They can go for the they can go for the wide guard all they want. The twisted dimensions return to normal. We go for another earthquake. I don't think they go for another wide guard. There we go, earthquake comes through. We outspeed them because the trick room's gone. The Bastion's just that slow. We take out Bastion. We don't even need the trick room. Because the Ranguru gets out sped. The only thing we gotta worry about is the DD. There's the DD coming in. Get some Stealth Rock Chip. All that wonderful stuff. I think we can do this, actually, with Rampados. I really think we can. Now the Bastion's out of the way. We hard switch into Landorus to get the KO. Get KO'd by Expanding Force. Which is great and all. We go into Landorus Therian. Get the Intimidate off, not that it really matters. We go down to Expanding Force. That's fine. We get the Trick Room up with the Slow King. They go for Expanding Force. That's so, see? That takes us out. But I'm fairly confident that our Slow King can do this. I'm fairly confident our Slow King can live an expanding force from this thing in Psychic Terrain. I'm fairly confident. Am I 100% confident? No. Am I fairly confident? Yes. So let's try it. Let's go for it. Let's go for the Drip Queen. This might be it. This might be the Rampardus video. This might be it. Okay, let's go for a Trick Room. Expanding Force comes through. Please, let's live this Slow King. Live this Slow King. Live this Slow King. We lived on 11 HP. We get the Trick Room up, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Twisted Dimensions. There we go. That's all great and all. And now they've got a Ranguru and they've got the Indeedee. Which is fine. We go for a Chili Reception here every single time. Just in case they switch out or they don't go for an attacking move or they go for a trick. They do withdraw. They do withdraw the Ndidi. And they go into the Oranguru. So Oranguru, does it outspeed us? The Rampados has base 58 speed and Oranguru has base 60. We are made negative speed with zero IVs. We get from the outspeed in the trick room. Let's go for a rock slide and KO this thing. We hit the rock slide, which is amazing. Doesn't actually KO as they go for a Psy Shock, which will KO us in Psychic Terrain, probably. <gasps> it doesn't. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We Rock Slide again. Yes, there we go. How did they take that Rock Slide so well? They must be physically defensive. That thing must be really bulky in physical defense. But we got one. We got one more. Tr we got one more turn of Trick Room, and we have to hope they don't have Protect on their NDD. We have to hope they don't have Protect on their NDD. There we go. The stones dig in. And uh, obviously, we don't go for a rock slide because it could miss. We go straight for an earthquake. And that should win us the game. There we go. With Rampados, finally. KOing four of the Pokemon. Oh, Rampados, finally. This was a tough one to do, I tell you what. I've been at it for ages. GG, though. GG, Dr. Banana, man. That was a fun one. I enjoyed that. That was epic, right? Rampados came through, but you're probably not satisfied yet, right? Right? So our next battle is a great game where Rampados shines, but is it enough to win? Let's find out.
And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Roberto. So they're going to lead off with Grimmsnarl as I expected. So I led off with my uh, Heatran because A, we can flash cannon it in the face and B, we can taunt it to stop it setting up on more screens. They probably go for a light screen. So if we can get the taunt up, that'd be great. Um, they go for a taunt of their own, not wanting to get the Stealth Rocks up, which is absolutely fine. Um, we fall for the taunt, which means we can't go for the taunt. Um, so it was a taunt off and we lost. So let's go for a Flash Cannon now, just get some damage off. They do go for the Light Screen. We can defog these away later, it's no problem. Um, it looks like they've got a Trick Room team like ours is, so that's actually advantageous for us because Rampardo is, I'm pretty sure, is slower than a lot of their Trick Room ones. And um, that Flash Cannon doesn't do enough damage, so I'm going to go for another Flash Cannon, because why not? They go for a Parting Shot. What are they going to go into, though? Are they going to go into one of their Trick Room ones? Um, probably, if I had to guess. So, they go back. What are they going to go into, though? Because I'm pretty sure Cresselia gets outsped. If they go for a Trick Room, that is. Molador comes in. What's that? That's the Ursa, Ursa Luna. Okay, so Ursa Luna is in. We go for a flash cannon, it's going to bounce right off them, which is fine. We shook off the taunt, but they are going to show that they are the flame body variant, which is very terrifying. Very terrifying. So we're going to have to go into Landorus now, get that Intimidate off. I think that's the only way we can get around this. We are defensive Landorus as well, so we should take a facade, no problem. Even If they go for a headlong rush, even better, but I feel like they predict the switch and go for a facade anyway. So let's get that Intimidate off, like so. And they go for an Earthquake, which is even better. So Earthquake is great. It means they don't get any damage off on the Landorus. Um, it also means that we can get the Stealth Rocks up now if we want to. So I am going to go for the Stealth Rocks. They withdraw. What are they going to go into to, to block the Stealth Rocks? Nothing, I don't think. Uh, Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl comes in once again. Which is fine. We go for the Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks come through. We now go for an Earthquake because they were clearly specially defensive based on the amount of damage we were doing earlier. So let's go for an EQ. They go for a Reflect. They didn't sub a Reflect earlier. Interesting, I didn't realize. We go for an Earthquake. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage. Not really. Not really a lot of damage. Um, What do we do here? So they probably Parting Shot. So let's U-turn, okay? So they go for a Parting Shot like so, which is absolutely fine. What do they go into? Do we, do we, I know we just got the Stealth Rocks up, but do we go into Mandibles to defog away the screens? I think we might do. I think we might do. I think they go Cresselia here. I think they go Cresselia here. Yeah, Cresselia comes in. That thing is a pain. It's nice and shiny, though. I like shiny Cresselia. It's nice. Stones are going to dig in, which breaks a potential Sash. Not that you'd run Sash on Cresselia. It's just too bulky. U-turn does a bit of chip damage. Prongs their red car. Eject button, even. Oh, interesting. And they get a jet button down into what, though? That's the real question. Grimmsnarl comes back in. Interesting. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. Um, We always go for a U-turn here, don't we? Because they go they go for a Reflect. Not that it matters, because obviously... Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't really do anything. So U-turn's going to do a bit of chip damage to them anyway. And to be honest with you, they can't parting shot Mandibles. I am just going to go Mandibles and I'm going to defog. Because they've got Taunt, Parting Shot, and Screens. So they have to switch out here. We can just keep defogging if we want to. So I'm going to defog right now. So they withdraw Grimmsnarl because they realize they can't do anything to us being a Dark type. They can't Taunt us, Parting Shot us or anything. They go to Magirna, which is a good switch. However, I'm pretty confident we outspeed them. So because they're, they're clearly a Trick Room team, right? Unless they're faking being a Trick Room team. They might be. But the Reflect and the Light Screen is going to wear off, of course. The Stealth Rocks also go away, but that's fine. We can get we can get them up um, later anyway against the King Gambit, against the Ursa Luna. It's no big deal. They actually have Eject Pack as well, um, which is interesting. So that's going to force them to switch out, which is interesting. And they're going to get forced out into Cresselia, which is great. So Cresselia comes in. We 100 go for a U-turn here because they probably go for a Trick Room, if I had to guess. U-turn comes through. Bit of damage. Not too much. Not too little. And if we assume they're going to go for a Trick Room, I'm going to be ballsy and I'm going to go into Rampardos because this thing, based on the U-turn damage, I'm going to guess they are specially, more specially defensive. I'm going to guess. They do go for the Trick Room, so we should in theory outspeed them here because Cresselia is actually quite like naturally fast. It's not super speedy or anything, but it's like, you know, it's fast enough. So if we go for a Rock Slide here like so, we could probably pull something off here. 
Rock Slide comes through. Will it KO the Cresselia? It does. Look at that damage. Rampardo's coming through. What a legend. So the Cresselia does go down, which is fantastic. And I'm really hoping to see an Ursa Luna here. Molador comes in. Is that the Ursa Luna? It is. And there's a reason I'm hoping to see an Ursa Luna. So they, we outspeed them um, normally. So it means they outspeed us in the trick room. They probably go for an EQ. So I'm going to go for a Terrestrializing fi Flying. And I'm going to go for a Blizzard. And it should, in theory, KO the Ursa Luna. So let's see if we can pull this off. If they go for a Facade, then we're kind of boned. If we outspeed them anyway in the Trick Room, because they haven't got negative speed IVs or something, then even better. They do go for a Drain Punch, which does a decent chip, bit of chip damage to us, but Special Defense on Ursa Luna is not a strong point, so I'm hoping that we can hit this Blizzard for a start, which we can't, which is really annoying. So... Plan B. Plan B. We've already seen the blizzard. They know it's coming. So they go for a facade here, right? So we go into Landorus. We go into Landorus. We try and get our stealth rocks up. That's the only way I can think about this. It's the only thing I can think to do. So we go Landorus, like so. Get the Intimate off. If we'd have hit that blizzard, there's a good chance it would have KO'd. Maybe not. But, you know, it's whatever. So Fake Out is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, facade, sorry, is going to do a lot of damage. But we get the Rocky Helmet chip, and our Landorus has disappeared for some reason. It's completely disappeared from the map. There he is. Right, so, if we assume they're going to go for a Facade again, we can't switch out. We have to just go for an Earthquake and hope for the best, um, but Facade KOs us anyway. Rocky Helmet is going to chip them away at least. And then, what do we do from here? I guess we go into Sloking? No. Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, though. So we could do something here with um, with Rampardo's Earthquake might KO from here. They have to go for Facade against it. But I think Heatran's a better option. I think Heatran is a better option. 100% of the time, better option. So, or do we go Rampardo's and try the Blizzard again? Should we do it? It's a bit, bit ballsy. I think I'm going to go with the Hydrapple play because it deters the um, it de de deters a lot of the Pokemon from coming in. Um, they probably go into the Magini here or the Sloking. So I'm going to go for that Earth Power real quick. We should outspeed. They do withdraw. What are they going to go into? Magina? Magina would be a good one. Grimmsnarl is also a decent one. Well, it's not really because it's going to go down. But um, we go for an Earth Power. That means no more screens, which is nice. So Hydrapple saves the day with a Grimmsnarl anyway. I can't believe I went for the blizzard without even having the snow up. I was just I was just feeling really ballsy, you know? You know when you just feel really ballsy? So Sloking comes in. Like so. Very good, very good. It goes for a trick room. We go for the la uh, the Rampardo switch 100% of the time here because they definitely go for a trick room. And then we just smash something in the face of an earthquake, pretty much. So Dread's going to come in. Like so. They go for a future site. Interesting. So now we've got a very good opportunity. So and um, we can go straight for an earthquake right now. They have or they haven't terraged yet, but we can go for an earthquake and anyway. I mean, they should KO the Sloking from here. So there we go. Sloking goes down. Rampados claims another soul. Which is amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Their Sloking goes down. That's no more trick room for them. Unless the Magina has trick room, in which case that is bad. Molador comes back in. The Ursa Luna. Do we try hitting the blizzard? Do we try it? Do we try it? Do we say YOLO and screw it? Because we get sucker punched anyway. I'm not confident we can take out Magena in one shot with Earthquake. I say screw it. Let's go for it. We hit it. Nice. Down goes the Ursa Luna. <laughs> coming through. What an absolute legend. It wouldn't surprise me if we, t if we see a forfeit. But the future side does take us down, unfortunately. But you know what? That was worth it. We took out three of their Pokemon, Cresselia. We took out the Slowking. We took out the Ursa Luna with a Blizzard. And we hit the Blizzard without the snow. Like that's that in my in my books, that's awesome. Let's go into our own Slowking real quick, because they probably go McGeeana here. So we go Drip Queen like so. There we go. Drip Queen comes through. They do go McGeeana, which is great. We do wall McGeeana to the ever loving past. We go for a trick room here 100% of the time. 
They may go for their own trick room. They actually go for a calm mind, which is interesting. So we lost our physical attacker in Rampados. Um, we did lost, lo lose Landorus as well. But us getting up a trick room here is going to be pretty um, it's gonna be pretty tough to break them again, that's for sure. So, what do we do? Um, I would say we chilly reception here just to get out of there. Because they're going to calm mind again. They're going to keep calm minding. And then we go Hydrapple and we Earth Power and we hope for a crit. Pretty much. Otherwise, we um, lose this Magina. So, because we lost both our physical attackers. So, um, maybe I shouldn't have blizzarded the Earth Saluna. But you know what? It was worth it for the meme. It was worth it for the meme. So, anyway, we, we chill reception out of there. Can we clutch win this game with like Heatran or something? Um, it, it, I'd say Heatran's a good one to go into now because it does do really well against the um, Magina if they're not Aura Sphere. Um, I'm assuming they're Trick Room. So let's go for a Lava Plume first and foremost. They've already seen the Taunt, so they probably won't Carmine again. They go for a Flash Cannon. That must be their best move to hit us with, which isn't going to do the job. As uh, we get a crit and that still did nothing. So Heatran is pretty much walling this thing. Lava Plume is doing way more damage than the Flash Cannon ever could. And we get the burn as well, which is fantastic. They go for another Flash Cannon. Obviously, it's going to bounce right off us. No problems there. And we go for another Lava Plume. And we're just whittling away at this Magina. I don't think Magina gets any reliable recovery. So I'm not really too worried about it, to be honest with you. So they go for a Fleur Cannon. Last ditch effort to get as much damage off as possible. Makes sense. Now the King Gambit's actually got a good chance of KOing us, but I think Hydrapple wins against the King Gambit anyway. So we fl we Lava Plume that uh, Magina into Oblivion. So Fret averted with the Calm Minds. And now we just have the King Gambit to deal with, which is, after his Supreme Overlord is no, you know, you, you don't mess around with King Gambit after a Supreme Overlord. Twisted Dimensions do return to normal as well. In comes Kenshin. So what I'm going to do here is, just to stop it from going for Swords Dancers, I'm going to go for a Taunt. We should outspeed. So we go for a taunt here 100% of the time. We taunt it, stop it from going for any Swords Dancers. I think that's going to be worth it in the end. Um, as they do in fact go for a Kauto Cleave, which is fine. That's going to definitely KO us. Absolutely fine. KOs us indefinitely. Heatran does go down. Maybe I should have gone for a Lava Plume, but I didn't want them setting up a Swords Dance, you know? So now we go for the Hydrapple. And if Hydrapple fails to KO this thing with two Earth Powers... Then we have got the Mandibuzz in the back with foul play. So that, that, that's not too bad. So they go for a Kauto Cleave. They do ask me does obviously. That's going to do a lot of damage. It's a 2-hit KO. We go for the Earth Power. And that's going to do a 2-hit KO to them as well, which is great. So that's, that's awesome. They are weakness policy though. Oh dear. Like I said, Mandibuzz is in the back. So we're all right. We're all right. Let's go for another Earth Power just in case. They go for a Kauto Cleave. And that takes us out, no problem. So we do have the Mandibuzz in the back with the foul play. We can definitely take a plus two Iron Head with that thing. And we hopefully KO with foul play because of the plus two attack. So let's go into it like so. I'm really hoping we, uh, hoping and praying right now that we can live. We, we are speed, which is great. And we KO with a foul play. GG, that was a decent game. Rampados popped off. That's definitely going in the Rampados video, that's for sure. Okay, that was brilliant. Rampados may not have won us the game, but taking out that Ursa Luna was epic for real. Anyway, our next game is a great one against Fornably from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. Stick around till the end for the rental code of the team. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Fornably. So they're going to lead off with Kiki, the Clefable, as I lead off with my uh, Great Stride, the Landorus. So not a bad lead. Got to watch out for them Ice Beams, of course, but I'm pretty confident we can take one. Um, I kind of want to get the Stealth Rocks up straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, they might Ice Beam us. I don't think they will, though. Stealth Rocks come through, which is great. Let's see what they go for. Uh, if the Ice Beam me, I'm going to be screwed. <laughs> uh, trick. Oh, wait. Are they a different kind of Clefable? What are they going to trick to us? What are they tri tricking to us? A Sticky Barb. And then they get the Rocky Helmet. So we are going to get some damage every turn from the Sticky Barb, which is really unfortunate. And if we U-turn, we get the Rocky Helmet. I should have I should have taunted. I should have taunted. Let's go for a U-turn real quick. Um, they do stay in, which is interesting. We're probably going to go for their own Stealth Rocks. Um, I'm guessing they're Magic Guard as well and not unaware, which is nice to know. Um, let's see what we can do here. So if we assume they're going to go for Stealth Rocks or something along those lines, we should go into our 
Sloking. We should go in Sloking. Now that Zamazenta is going to put a stop to our Rampardo, so we need to be careful of that. So they actually go for a Stealth Rocks. Yeah, that's fine. Stealth Rocks is fine. They more than likely switch out, if I had to guess, into something along the lines of, I don't know, Gliscor. So let's go for a Trick Room real quick. They withdraw. Interesting. So they're going to go into what exactly? The Gliscor, maybe? Zygma. <laughs> The Zamazenta comes in. So that's an interesting one. So that's going to come in. Um, guess that Dauntless Shield. We go for a Trick Room, however. And that's going to allow us to um, outspeed it with some of our slower mods, like Hydrapple, for example, hit it on the special side. So that's going to be great. So Zamazenta comes in. Zamazenta comes in. Um, let's go for a Future Side first and foremost to stop it from reliably setting up on us. They go for a crunch, which is interesting. That's going to do nearly half, which is good. Um, good damage. Good damage for them. We go for a future sight, foreseeing an attack, obviously. Now we're going to chill reception. We are, we, are, we, are, we get outsped by them, but we're going to chill reception anyway. They go for an iron defense, which is terrifying, to say the least. However, I'm not really, really too worried. So we go for a chilly reception. So they have stealth rock and trick on the Clefable. They probably don't have ice beam. They probably just have Moonblast, right? So we'll go out into our... I, I want to go into Rampardo straight away, but I can't, there's, there's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do at all. Um, I think our best bet is Hydrapple, so let's go into it. Good old head game. Like so. And we have to basically hit an all-out Fickle Beam, pretty much. So I'm going to go for the Fickle Beam. Um, Fickle Beam comes through. It doesn't all-out, but it does do a lot of damage. They go for a Raw... And hopefully we see a Aurora into the uh, Rampardo. So that'd be ideal. That would be ideal. Um, the reason I say that's ideal... Oh, it is the Rampardo as well. Nice. The reason I say that's ideal is because this thing's going to get taken out by a future side this turn. I believe. Yeah, takes out by the future side. Future side. Yep, takes out there. There we go. So Zama's entered down. We still got another turn of Trick Room, I believe. Kamu Sale, that's going to be the Gliscor, right? No, it's the Garganacle. Garg comes in. Trick Room is still up. We should be... We, they should outspeed us here. So, do we go for an Earthquake? Do they expect... Do they go for a Salt Cure? That's, that's the real question. Do I go for an Earthquake? I go for an Earthquake here. They go for an Earthquake themselves, which is going to take us out. Not. As we go for an Earthquake, and that should do a lot of damage to them. Nearly takes them out, which is great. Lost some HP, all that wonderful stuff. And they're going to get some leftovers recovery. But the Trick Room does wear off this turn, which means we outspeed them the next turn. Which is, like, um, ideal, right? So what do they do here? Do they let their... Do they let themselves go down to a Rock Slide? Or do they switch into Gliscor? Can we KO with Blizzard from here? I think we KO with Blizzard from here. I think they go into Gliscor, personally. I think Gliscor is the optimal switch. Drac. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. Yes! Please tell me we just pulled that off. Please tell- after the stealth rocks, that's definitely taking out, right? Blizzard? Yes! yes! We got the Rampados! Blizzard tech off! Nice! Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's also good to know the Garganacle outspeeds us in Trick Room as well. So Biotech comes in. That's the Dragapult. This thing is a threat. Point stones do dig in. We lose Rampardos here. And let, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. We go Mandibuzz. We go Mandibuzz. Because this thing's gonna this thing's gonna sell on us. It's gotta be Dragon Dance, right? No, it won't be Dragon Dance. It'll be special looking at the team. They go for a U-turn. That's fine. Anything that they bring in, we can defog. We actually need to get rid of the self rocks now. <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate. Um, in order to do this. So let's go ahead and see what they do. Kamusale comes in. That is going to be the Garg. Going to get some Stealth Rock Chip. Which means we no longer go for our original plan. Which is Stealth Rocks. Uh, which is Defog. And we actually foul play this thing into Oblivion. We get rid of the Garg. Get rid of the Garg with a foul play. There we go. Foul play comes through. Mandibles gets KO. Nice. So with the Garg out of the way. With the Garg out of the way. We are good to go. Kiki comes in. That's going to be the Clefable. We know it has Stealth Rocks. We know it has Stealth Rocks. 
So I don't want to defog just yet. I want to get rid of this thing first, or at least get to a point where we can get Randomados in. Because yeah, looking, looking at the rest of the team, if we can, oh, if we can get a trick room, or oh, if we can get trick room up. Um, let's you turn into Sloking first and foremost. They actually Moonlight, which is interesting. So they're going to recover their little health they had left. Uh, well, what, what? They're, they're, a, they're a speedy Clefable as well, by the looks of it, because they outsped us. So Rocky Helmet is going to dig into us, which is unfortunate. I didn't think they'd outspeed us. But they must be a speedy Clefable with this trick. So that's um, good to know. So now we go Sloking and we Sludge Bomb this thing into Oblivion. They'll be hesitant to go into the um, Dragapult because the Dragapult's got to be special, right? So they're probably going to go... Mm, let's go for a Sludge Bomb first and foremost. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb. They withdraw. Are they going to go Dragapult? Or are they going to go Cinderace? Lapignov, that's going to be Cinderace. So Cinderace comes in, that's an interesting choice. Sludge Bomb comes through. It's a two shot. And we get the poison, which is great. That's great. All I want to do is get the Trick Room up and then get Rampardos in again, but I can't do it until we get rid of those leftovers, until we get those hazards. So let's go into Mandibles now. Let's go into Mandibles now, because I know I can take a Pyro Ball, no problem. And we'll go for that Defog. Sucker Punch, even better. Even better. They were expecting us to attack. So they didn't get the Libero because obviously they didn't get to go for the attack, which is great. We go 100% for a Defog here to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. They go for a U-turn. That's going to Libero them into a Bug type. And that's going to do note. So they probably, if I had to guess, go into the Fable here. Kiki comes in. That's fine. We want to get into a position where Ram Rampados can come back in with the Trick Room up. But the problem we've got is Cinderace. Cinderace can Sucker Punch us. But you know what? Rampados did really well this game. So I'm going to keep this one in anyway. I'm going to go for a Roost. They actually go for a Moonblast instead of setting up the stick Stealth Rocks again, which makes sense because I've got the Defog. But we go for the Roost anyway, so that's absolutely fine. So we've got the Roost off. So we're going to have to hard switch here. I'm going to hard switch into Slow King once again. Like so. Drip Queen comes through. Like so. They go for another Moonblast, which is obviously going to do no damage, which is fine. So now, I'm looking at this situation, and I'm thinking, do we Trick Room here, or do we Sludge Bomb? I'm going to Sludge Bomb to get rid of the Kiki. They go for a Stealth Frog, so that's fine. I'm going to Sludge Bomb to get rid of this thing. It won't KO, obviously, but I want to I want to try and get rid of this thing. So we go for a Sludge Bomb. There we go, Sludge Bomb comes through. We get the Poison, not that it matters, because I'm pretty sure the Magic Guard is the Sticky Barb trick. We go for another Sludge Bomb 100% of the time here. They go for another trick. Getting rid of our lagging tail. So we get a rocky helmet. And they get a lagging tail. We go for a sludge bomb. And down goes the fable. So that's great. I just want I just want the Rampardos to come in and take out that Dragapult. That's all I want. That's all I want in life. Biotech comes in. That's got to be the uh, Dragapult, right? Yeah, the Dragapult comes in. So we chili reception here to get out of there. They terrestrialize. What type are they going to terrestrialize into, though? Are they going to go ghost? Are they going to go ghost? I wonder. They are Terra Ghosts, so they're going to go for a Shadow Ball more than likely. If they go for a Terra Blast and they're physical, I'm very confused. They aren't, they're Shadow Balls, so that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. We can definitely take a Choice Specs Terra, Shadow Ball, Terra Ghost Shadow Ball, that's for sure. Never mind, we can't. It was a critical hit. But you know what, Rampardos did the thing with the Blizzard, so I'm, I'm happy with this game, I'm happy with this game. Now I simply go into Hydrapple, and Hydrapple should be able to finish up the game right now. Should be able to finish up the game. Uh, we just go for a Terra. Fickle Beam. And hopefully we can get it all out. That'd be amazing. There we go. We're going to go all out. Like so. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully we go all out. We get the Terra Poison. They go for a Draco Meteor probably. If they can switch your moves. If the Choice Specs, which I think they probably are about that damage. Yeah, they're Choice Specs. Otherwise they would have Draco there. Shadow Ball comes through. And it does over just, just, just over half, which is amazing. Special Defense drops, which is unfortunate. We go for a Fickle Beam, and it doesn't go all out, which is really a shame. Which means we have to sack something off now, and it's going to have to be Rampados. So Rampados, come on in. Come on in, Rampados. Get your send taken out by the Stealth Frogs. <laughs> 
so that I can get Hydrapple back in with a Regenerator boost. As they go for another Shadow Ball, which is fine. So it looks like um, this would be a Hydrapple video if we hadn't already done one. So this is just going to be a bonus battle, I think. Which is good to note. So we get some Stealth Rocks digging in. And we go for a Thicker Beam. We can definitely take a Shadow Ball, no problem. We can definitely take a Shadow Ball, no problem. And then we go into Landorus to KO the Cinderace. There we go. Thickle Beam comes through. We go all out this time. We go all out this time for sure. There we go. Down down goes the Dragapult, which is fine. And with the Dragapult out of the way, we've just got the Cinderace left to go, which is absolutely amazing. So the, the team did really well this game. I, you know, that... that, that, that I think this, this will not be a bonus battle. This will be the third battle in the Rampardos video, I think. Just because we got the Blizzard tech off, and it's always fun to see. Let's go for a Thicker Beam just in case. Pyro Ball comes through. Boom. Down goes Hydrapple. So we have got the Landorus in the back with the Intimidate. So that's 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 all well and good. They get some poison damage as well. Which means the puzzle on a timer for a start. We definitely go Landorus here. Got all great stripes. There we go. Poison stones do, do it again. Intimidate comes through. We go for an Earthquake. There's no real reason not to. They go for a Pyro Ball. If we should live, we do live. And we Earthquake the Cinderace in the face. There we go. So GG, Fawnable. I hope I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, right. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not. I'm rubbish at pronouncing names. Fawnably. Fawnably. GG. Amazing. What an end to the Rampardos video. That Gliscor predict was clean. I just want to say thank you so much for all the support lately on the new style of videos. And also a big thank you for watching today's video as well. Feel free to use the team using the code at the top right corner of the screen. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.